Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. We are commonly known in America as to be very open-minded about other faiths, other religions, other spirituality from around the world. One of the bigger proponents in the world we often tout in the Christian world, and I can claim myself for this just moment of time to be Christian, is that often Christian companies, churches, and organizations try to promote themselves cross-culturally to the Muslim world. I don't feel that that's right to do today. I feel that Muslims have really gone far off the path of their own Muslimness and their own beliefs in God and, the own, and their own principles of the faith. I am, however, remotely and curiously interested in a principle of the Hindi faith called Ganesha. And when I talk about Ganesha or Ganesh, I recognize that the image of Ganesh is often found with the deity head of an elephant. Now the value of that is that in that world, elephants are holy to a point and protected to another point, at the same time utilized for travel and trekking. But something we know about elephants is that they are definitely a part of God's world. They definitely have a spirituality. Some of them can apparently even allegedly paint, who live in zoos and whatnot. But at the same time, they are able to do a lot of moving of things. We've often seen them used and abused in movies like Lord of the Rings and others in terms of their warrior capabilities and their way that they can plow through things. But what we don't often hear about is something we should hear about is their prospectivity and their proclivity to family. An elephant family becomes a relatively large herd. And over the course of time, male and female elephants live together rather marvelously peacefully and they do so with a lot of inclemental weather, a lot of difficulties in the conditions where they live, and a lot of predators from alligators, crocodiles, to lions and tigers, and not bears, but you know what I'm saying. And the value of the Hindi religion hasn't quite reached its peak across America yet today, because we often automatically presume and assume that people who are of the Middle East are Muslim. That is sometimes true, and predominantly true, but not completely true. And the other part, hard part about people from Muslim countries is that they have no problem in lying to me or you, and that they will often lie and say, no, I'm not Muslim, my family is Hindi. And they're taught that as a child to avoid a lot of abuses that Christians and the Christian kingdom, if you will, might lay upon them for their abuses of women, children, and child and environment. One of the benefits of the elephant-headed um, anthropomorphic figure of Hindi uh, called Ganesha is that he, she, it is noted as being a god over obstacles, a god of the patron arts and sciences, and sort of a diva of in intellectual property and works. And Ganesha has also invoked a lot of things that have come about in writing sessions from around the world. And it, the texts are really kind of mythological and anecdotal to, um, with regard to uh, the deity's birth and exploits. What we also sort of know about Ganesh in the old photographs of Ganesh is that he had both male and female parts. And it is very possible at one time in the history of the world that that was a lot more typical than atypical in that community than we think of today. We all are quite familiar because of shows like Oprah, Dr. Phil, Ricky Lake, and others that there are still children born as hermaphroditic. And a lot of times in societies that are third world or impoverished, those children actually are considered blessings to family and gain some notoriety of being a different type of spirituality because of the deity Ganesh and they're sort of aligned and connected with that
What I do know about people who are dealing with, again, a topic that political people have asked me to talk about as a consultant and sort of an old-time understander of the history of this particular predicament of the physical birth defect of not androgyny per se, but uh, a mismatch of soul and genitalia, is that people around the world are abusers and users of those people. Abusers of those people because there's a lot of Christians and a lot of Muslims of hatred, proclivities, and indecencies that want to humiliate those children and demand that they become their biology on the outside as opposed to their cellular health or their soul health on the inside. At the same time, we have abusers or what you might call bemusers who want to use them for notoriety. And we've seen a lot of that in television shows today. We did have a film that came out several years ago that was actually done, I felt, improperly, but still was pretty marvelous in which they did not actually allow a trans actor to play the part. And that was sort of an art and science film. There was also Priscilla, Queen of the Desert that had a really hard blow to that type of inclination, but not fully what we're talking about here today. You see, the soul is something that is given to us by God. And no matter what race, nation, creed, tribe, club, membership, whatever you belong to, you have to be able to deal with your own soul. And in order to be a healthy person, we know that faith is a predominant part of healing any health condition. So while that's kind of a stretch for some people of a real religious right, what I can say to you all in those arrogance of your minds that you never have the right to any human being's body without their consent or with their permission. Not only is it a biblical principle that the human body and its nakedness and its genitalia are private to this day, except for the wild and crazy nude beaches, probably the California way, where people are a little bit more fun in the sun and a little bit more caring about their actual physical health and form and that everybody looks the same in hot bodies or whatnot and hot toddies when they drink them. But the point that I'm making without being silly or ridiculous is that we have an immoral society of every kind and every faith group that is abusing a simple situation that many people feel is just a freak of nature. But what we see from the deities and anthropology and histories of many nations around the world, that there is always a being that has both parts. And it is depicted that way for one of two reasons, that it actually was a hermaphroditic condition, or it was a representation of the soul versus the body in that world. Now, I don't have to give you and cite you all the sources because if you're really interested in this particular topic, like some people are putting forth as if it's a publicity situation, and I guess that goes back to the users of the condition, that the people who are not bipolar but literally who are bigendered don't feel like they get a right so they want to stay in the middle ground. It doesn't really work right now in our current society to do that. But more importantly, the people who are gay or lesbian feel that that condition of gender dysphoria or transgenderism is somehow an abuse or an abandonment of that type of sexuality, and I can tell you that it's not. You see, sexuality is a totally separate situation than the way that a person's human soul feels about their actual body. Now, many people across America and around the world can relate to a condition of some sort of a body dysmoria in which there's something about the body, their own human body, that they don't like. For example, my late spouse wasn't really crazy about her feet, and we would joke about them being gorilla feet, but I loved them anyway. They were beautiful to me. And she had a little bit of a trouble. There are other people that have foot problems that make their feet kind of disformed, but that doesn't change the way that a person can love them. 
in life we have to talk about the truth of life and the truth of life is pretty straightforward that every human being on the planet has a right to find love in the world every human child has a right to find and feel the love of their parent and every parent has the responsibility and right to not abuse their children they have the responsibility to pick up a fucking book and research and learn how to parent correctly so that we don't have abominations to the Lord in our communities and bastards who steal and rob and maim us in our communities but that happens from child abuse but at the same time every human being once they reach adulthood has the right to the privacy of their sexuality whatever that might be and as long as we are looking at the truth of life that we do not really put our sexuality out there except in a few unique situations by a photo on our desk by a hand held in public or by a careful and, and simple caress or kiss so what I'm saying to you motherfucking people in the world today and I'm gonna swear at you the way that I feel that I should that when it comes to someone's human body it's none of your fucking business what they do and don't have in their pants or under their shirts but here's what I'm really offended about today here's what I cannot believe today that we have motherfucking law enforcement medical practitioners and shitbags from around the world that don't really belong here because they lied and they stole and they cheated themselves into staying here that you have no fucking right to ruin someone's rights to their records their possessions or their personhood with your ideas of what they should or shouldn't do for their life.